Positive Spin, presenting positive, innovative, and solution-oriented news from around the world. Speeches and tasks will not solve the problem, but walk the talk is more effective. On today's program, we'll feature the United Nations film, The Year in Review. There are 112... And we'll present a profile of environmental activist and Goldman Prize recipient, Parfula Samatara from India. We are on a collision course. There has never been a Then, San Francisco artist G. Mark Mullion will present his powerful artistic anti-nuclear message. Finally, we'll learn about the inspiring life story of Natalina D'Agostino. In our first segment, we feature the annual United Nations film, The Year in Review. The film highlights the accomplishments, challenges, and ongoing programs of our world organization. 2017, a new Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, arrives at the United Nations dedicated to reform, gender parity, and conflict prevention. Around the world, the list of challenges keeps growing. We are a world in pieces. We need to be a world at peace. The world's fastest growing refugee crisis evolves in Myanmar. Driven by violence and human rights abuse, more than 600,000 stateless Rohingya fled to Bangladesh, where the fragile infrastructure is overwhelmed. The UN scaled up emergency aid and called on Myanmar to end military operations against the Rohingya. No one is winning today's wars. In Yemen, 8.5 million people are on the brink of the world's largest famine in modern times. Water and sanitation systems are all but destroyed, sparking a deadly cholera outbreak. The UN sent in emergency supplies and urged all parties not to block civilians from humanitarian aid. Four famines in Yemen, South Sudan, Somalia and Nigeria are the result of unresolved conflicts exacerbated by droughts and missed harvests. In the deadliest attack on a UN peacekeeping mission in decades, 14 Tanzanian peacekeepers lost their lives in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. It is another indication of the enormous sacrifices made by troop contributing countries in the service of global peace. The mission MINUSCO is the largest in the world, with a mandate to challenge armed groups who've kept their grip on the vast mineral-rich region for years. Another protracted war, Syria. Six years of conflict have left 250,000 people dead and five million displaced. Some people returned to liberated Aleppo while in besieged eastern Ghouta, Thousands of people received food and medicine from a UN aid convoy. Fighting continued in other places, including chemical weapons attacks. Temporary ceasefires were brokered and the UN special envoy for Syria is working tirelessly to bring the parties to the negotiating table and for an end to the war. Almost 100,000 migrants crossed the Mediterranean Sea in 2017. More than 3,000 have drowned. Most are fleeing poverty and conflict in sub-Saharan Africa. More than a million people are waiting for a passage in Libya, caught in an endless cycle of abuse, exploitation and even slavery. The new UN Secretary-General's reform proposals put people ahead of bureaucracy and mediation and prevention at the centre of the UN's peace and security agenda. The UN's newly established Office of Counterterrorism coordinates a global effort to prevent violent extremism and other root causes of terror. And the UN also launched strategies to end sexual exploitation and committed to achieve gender parity. Around the world, 130 million girls are still not going to school. Unacceptable for UN Messenger of Peace, Malala Yousafzai. If you want to go forward, we have to give education to girls. And once you educate girls, you change the whole community, you change the whole society. By 2020, the UN aims to double the number of women peacekeepers, to protect civilians and support local women to participate in peace building. 
success in Colombia, where the UN mission verified the disarmament process of the last former FARC fighters, pointing the way to lasting peace in the country. Closure in The Hague. After more than 24 years, the UN's tribunal for the former Yugoslavia completed its work. The tribunal was the first war crimes court established by the UN and has brought more than 160 perpetrators to justice. In the last major case, the former Bosnian Serb commander, Ratko Mladic, was sentenced to life in prison for multiple counts of genocide and crimes against humanity. New nuclear and missile tests in the DPRK, otherwise known as North Korea, led to increasing tensions around the Korean peninsula and worries around the world. We must not sleepwalk our way into war. And more broadly, all countries must show greater commitment to the universal goal of a world without nuclear weapons. The UN Security Council tightened existing sanctions on North Korea. In December, the government in Pyongyang invited a UN envoy to start discussing issues of mutual concern. Meanwhile, 122 countries voted for the first ever treaty to completely prohibit nuclear weapons, a historic moment for disarmament. Waves in New York at the Ocean Conference, member states committed to voluntary measures to protect the world's seas. Shortly after, a series of mega hurricanes cut a trail of destruction through the Caribbean. On some islands like Dominica, hardly a tree or a house was left standing. Scientists saw strong evidence that climate change magnified the strength of the storms and other natural disasters. The UN called on countries to speed up the implementation of the Paris Climate Agreement. Speeches and tasks will not solve the problem, but walk the talk is more effective. In our next segment, we profile Indian environmentalist Prafula Samantara, who led a 12-year legal battle for indigenous land rights and the protecting of the Neangari Hills from a massive open pit aluminum ore mine. The Neangari Hills in India's eastern Odisha state are home to the Dongria Kone tribe. For generations, these indigenous people have lived sustainably from the natural abundance of the forest. The Niamgiri Hills are very important ecologically. This sacred mountain is the source of two major rivers, and there are many species of plants and animals. In 2003, indigenous rights activist Perfula Samantara was surprised to read about a public hearing for a proposed bauxite mine in the Niamgiri Hills. The mountaintop mine was a joint project between the state government and British mine company, Vedanta Resources. The Dongria Kon people didn't know about the public hearing because it took place far away in a language they don't speak. India's constitution grants indigenous people the right to control development on their land. Knowing that the tribal people had these legal rights, Perfula immediately set out to alert them about the threat to their homeland. There are 112 Dongria Khan villages. 112. To reach one village, it takes half a day to walk up the mountain. It took nearly a year to reach all the people and unite them in the struggle to protect Niamgiri. In anticipation of the mine, Vedanta illegally annexed 700 acres below the hills, bulldozing five villages to construct a bauxite refinery. Bauxite is a key mineral used in aluminum production. Pollution from bauxite mining lasts for 1,000 years. The mining site is also the source of Niramgiri's rivers. 
So how will the people survive? They will be wiped out. We are talking about ethnic extinction. If they take away these rocks, we'll lose our soul. Niyamgiri is our soul. Perfula, who has degrees in law and economics, partnered with public interest lawyers and filed a petition with the Supreme Court, challenging the mine on environmental, human, and tribal rights violations. Perfula then helped the tribes organize a united resistance against Vedanta. There were rallies, hunger strikes, and protests. People came from all over the country and formed a human chain that went around the mountain. Barbar, police. The police repeatedly tried to repress us on behalf of Vedanta. We were attacked and beaten, but we were committed to a completely nonviolent protest. Rafulda is a non compromising activist. So, needs first, not the greed is the principle that the Mahatma Gandhi brought into the Indian politics as well as economy is something that he sticks to. Almost a decade after Prafula's initial filing, the Supreme Court issued an historic decision reaffirming the rights of indigenous people. The Dongri Akon voted unanimously to reject the mining project. This is very important decision. If it is applied throughout the country, it will benefit actually the poor people, the tribals who have been living in the forest areas for centuries. By protecting the tribal people, we protect nature. This is our greatest responsibility, so we can stop the destruction of climate change. For outstanding environmental achievement for Asia, the 2017 Goldman Environmental Prize is awarded to Prafula Samantara, Odisha, India. With the fear of nuclear war being at its highest level since the Cold War, San Francisco artist and activist Jimak Mullian has created a video presentation highlighting the growing nuclear threat and our urgent need to address this issue. Considering the present world situation, the possibility of a nuclear catastrophe is more apparent than ever before. A Pandora's box has been opened, and now it is up to all of us to close it. This is not a problem that politicians can solve. Our salvation depends on the transforming power of human hearts. Only in the center of our being we will we be able to find the guidance necessary to prevent our extinction. Controversial and always outspoken, G. Mark Mullion's painting speak of war and human consciousness. He was instrumental in the cultural clash of combining the multimedia mainstream press and the subculture press of the gay community on an international scale. G. Mark Mullion has captured the public's imagination for more than four decades. He has received extensive press coverage both within and outside of the United States. Today, moving into the 21st century, he is embracing the power of the internet to progress his quest for peace through his amazing website, Mullion.com, where he is reaching millions worldwide. In 1986, he was presented with an International Art Achievement Award by the Artist Society International, one of the art world's most prestigious awards. Insightful, mysterious, and controversial, his style is called transrealism where the artist observes all of the refined elements that our life here on Earth has to offer. The stirring up of conflict is a Luciferian virtue in the true sense of the word, conflict, and engenders fire, the fire of affects and emotions. And like every other fire, it has two aspects, that of combustion and that of creating light, writes Carl Jung. Dies Irae, the cornucopia of Mullion's works, and perhaps the best known. It is also one of the most complex in terms of conception, composition, and symbolic representation, 
a painting of symphonic dimensions. The image depicts a highly dramatic vision, biblical in scale, of the moment before the end of all moments, the moment before the end of all human sentience, the split second before the chance of choice is gone from human grasp forever. A presence on top of the tree of peace, which rises and descends, flying directly into the blast, compelled by the second seminal light to receive its calling of guardianship of transformative hope. The belief of American Indians is that the eagle is a messenger sent by the Creator. What is this welling fury, this roiling of the sea, this turgid, monstrous swelling, this breaking surface of the deep? Could it be Leviathan, fresh sworn from the mouth of hell, boiling, bursting forth in dark dystopian splendor, engorged, ebullient, spewing fiery bile to sear indelibly, an ominous reply to the hubris of mankind? Where once we lived by wit and natural instinct, rooted in harmony and secured within existence as one living instrument among the many, cadenced rhythms of the seasons ruled, and the harmonies of spirit animated all. Like the passion from the hands of a fine violinist, ever so refining of itself, man's voice soared high within the greater whole, a solo bank of strings within symphonic registers. His role? To amplify this wondrous resonance as an echo of the greater natural pulse. But in time, the integrity of our quest for truth has been deformed. Through unthoughtful alliances and short-sighted miscalculations, our world evolves into a monster of our own design. But in so doing, by sheer default, we'll usher in the age of truth. From the beginning, the laws of natural order foresaw the outcome of this metamorphosis. Long before the fishes charted course beneath its surface of the deep, long before man first walked the surface of the earth, subduing, possessing, ordaining himself ruler over all. Now man, bereft of foothold, stumbles to comprehend, bound not to a violin, but to the handle of a pick. No longer an instrument to inspire, discover, nor to build. Instead, a tool to dominate, exploit, and destroy. Professing altruistic, patriotic intent while enacting a predatory pragmatism in the service of self, he becomes a living instrument of self-destruction. No longer free to stake his natural claim to the fullness of human destiny as part of the greater whole, his calloused, lifeless hand gestures this way to what once was. Lying now in wake, unwitting pawn of avaricious force, complicit as a would-be master of the universe, would-be destroyer of the fragile balance of all things. There is no one other than himself to mourn. But long before humanity's aspirations for our greatest human potential begin to fade into obscurity forever, where hope and human consciousness vanish into darkness, nature intervenes to compensate, correct, restore the balance. Now begins her overture, resonating her voice through us, elevating us to a greater perception through the powers of creativity, gateway to the soul. If we acknowledge that we are within the eternal mind of nature, which moves and works through us in sustaining itself, we become an irreversible truth, which frees us from our own enslavement and ultimate distinction. But in the end, this polarizing discord, this war between man and nature, will be settled on nature's terms. For us, to see the greater natural order, we must allow nature to see through our eyes, but, with circumspection, we must also hear the intrinsic natural harmonies that nature has instilled in us from the beginning. For this to happen, we must listen. But we must also hear equally as much with heart as with mind, 
and as much with sense as intuition. Hence are the true forces of man and nature. We are on a collision course. There has never been a time in history in which humanity's misguided aspirations stand in such conflict with our very existence. That existence now hangs in the balance between the forces of man and nature. We must come to understand and appreciate our true purpose, that we can be partners in the creation of a more fully evolved world. To ignore the signs of the times is to risk all. In our ongoing series, Inspirational Life Stories, we profile Natalina D'Agostino, who was saved as a child in Italy by U.S. Marines during World War II, survived an abusive marriage, and has risen above her past to become a joyful, positive, and multi-talented American citizen. Thank you, Bill. I want to introduce you to the happiest person in the world that I know. And it happens to be my mom. Here's Natalina D'Agostino. Oh, buongiorno. Buongiorno. <laughs> So we are with Mama Sita and we're having a wonderful conversation. Thank you. I wanted to stop by asking you about your life in Italy. You know, what it was like growing up there, I, uh, what you went through, and when you coming to the U.S., how different was it? Well, I started going, I, in, I met in Italy, no? I go in Canada, 20 years in Toronto, Canada. And I come back to USA, my brother called us, and we come in America to USA. Uh, from USA, we go in Arizona. Arizona, we come to San Diego for 30 years, and we were there. I got a better life, I got a five children, you know, four boys, one girl, and I, I divorced, and I started with my son, called Claudio, to my son, and I enjoy the life, very good. So tell us a little bit about the colorful life you've lived. I know that you're an artist, and you do incredible artwork, and I know also that you are very stylish, Thank you. And that you dance at the Mizell Center. Yes. Right? With your, with your wonderful walker. <laughs> so tell us about all these things. Yes, because I enjoy it with nice you know, people. I got a good time. You know. yes, I like the art. I make a craft. I make a lot of beautiful art. Milk cups. Mm. I fix with the material. I decoration. I glue. First I saw, I glue. And I make a Christmas tree. 17 years ago, <laughs> I make this. Which, which I, yeah. I recycle everything. I make wonderful stuff. I like. I enjoy it very, very much. I make this crap with my hands. I saw beautiful things with this cereal cardboard. This I make pin for the people who use. This I make for a toilet paper roll. I cut and decoration. I make a lot of beautiful things, candy cane, I make a lot of things I like and do craft. I enjoy it very much. I work stand in the kitchen all the time. Mama, solo che lei spostato un po' così. No, no, no. Mamma mia! Oh, she's wonderful. She's a ray of sunshine. I'm always happy to come on Thursdays to see her smiling face. And her son is a charm. 
I, I feel like she's my sister. We became friends here at my cell. She's so sweet all the time with me. She told me today, uh, Happy New Year, and I feel like you're my sister. She, she's been coming in here for quite some time now. I think a couple of years. Always has a nice smile on her face. It's always nice to see her, and she's always dressed up so pretty <laughs> with her bright colors on and everything. We enjoy having her here. So I've known Mamacita for the past three years. Uh, Claudio was in here two years ago. He started coming in two years ago with her, but she's great. She's always happy, smiling, and she brings life. She's always got a positive attitude when she comes in here. She makes people smile, and she's sparkly. So that's how it's Oh, she's enough of a woman for me? Is that what she's saying? She's all woman. I have a wife, but I don't know. Maybe I'll, I'll choose this instead. Well, this lady is absolutely wonderful. She always looks beautiful, and she brightens up the whole place. Every time she's in here, it's much better. I'm gonna ride a Disney land. Oh my gosh. Hmm. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I know I'm kind of confined in here. Okay. This is punishment. My mama wants to punish me. She she locks me in with the walker. I can't go anywhere. I can't go anywhere. <laughs> you hear that she's abusing me verbally. This is this is why I used to drink, people. I used to be on the bottle, and I'm not talking about the baby bottle. <laughs> Now that you've seen her, don't you all agree? Well, that's our show for today. We hope this program has inspired you to take action in your local community to create a better world. I'm Bill McCarthy, and I want to remind you that everyone can make a difference. Go out and make some positive news. Positive news. Positive news.